Hello my soccer universe to a somewhat different video but one that has been burning for me um, in me for quite a while and it all comes down to the question that I got asked uh, once or twice already why do I hate soccer balls on soccer jerseys and let me be clear I actually think this is more of a problem in the national team uh, identities where it just bugs me and there are many things that bug me and so i said let's make a video uh good examples and bad examples of how to evolve your um national team look what are do's what are don'ts and i had a whole list with you know i could have said do this do that i th I, I thought Maybe it's the best way to show it on actual examples. And unfortunately, my collection is big enough that I can actually give uh, quite a few examples of that. And I want to first start. I am wearing England, which actually is one example because especially this England jersey is such a traditional look, clearly uh, inspired by the 1966 World Cup winning jersey. The crest is the traditional England crest. England actually went to the na uh, the national uh, what was it a college of uh, coat of arms and had one designed, which I find really really cool. Yes, we can discuss whether the faces of the lions are all that great looking, but overall very identifiable, and they're never gonna change that one. I hope. So, let me show you another really really good example uh, of how. What are good and what are bad things? And I want to start off with uh, World Champions France. This here is my first ever France jersey. Um, when it came out, I loved it. But it is very 90s. Uh, this style crest, I just accepted it. It is rather static, but it is your typically French crest. Uh, I think it has been used since the 70s, if not 60s. So there has been precedent to it. To it. Note. France is a big nation, it just needs the rooster. There is no soccer ball to it, FFF for the French Federation. Then we have then this um, template. As I said, I love this jersey when I got it. Meanwhile, I'm a little bit uh, cold in it. I love the um, old style uh, strings. I'm not so sure about these white patches with the French flag. So don't get too stuck in uh, templates which back then was normal. Nowadays, uh, France will never get stuck in a template. The shadow pattern we can also discuss. But you know, this was a decent France look for most of the, all of the time. Then, in the late 2000s, France decided to change to this logo. I love this jersey. The logo actually um, is a mixed bag in many ways. What I do like about it, updated the old one, it's a little bit more dynamic, there are more uh, nice lines, but it also is a little bit of a modern abomination in many ways. Don't you think? Uh, it, it lacks a certain flair where the other one, it stood the test of time. It screams Zidane, it screams Platini. This one got very much um, confounded with not so great French teams uh, and was very much the dark ages for France. For that reason, that logo never caught on, despite the star and despite it actually, I remember when I saw it the first time, I thought, yeah, actually it makes a little sense, it looks a little bit more like a rooster, so it looks a little bit more dynamic, just didn't work out. So, if you build something new, you need a new logo, and France did one of the best redesigns by going back to the roots, but updating it, and went with the rooster logo that was on the sh uh, jersey on the 30s, 40s, 50s, but just keep it white. I mean, it would be interesting to see. Uh, I think the old ones actually were more colored. It would be in interesting to see how this would look like. But this is definitely one of the best redesigns for the simple reason. Look at the frigging detail on that rooster. This looks awesome. This is to me one of the best redesigns that Nike ever uh, is, was assisted by. It's gorgeous. In addition, what both of these jerseys do, uh, paying a little bit homage to, uh, to old jerseys. This was the last uh, France away jersey by Adidas. Clearly has some 82 vibes. Great team. Absolutely love the pinstriping here. This jersey, yes, opinions are split. You know that I love it. It has a little bit cultural heritage with the Marinier 
uh, pattern. Also, the red stripe for me for France should be there, needs to be there. Um, also pays uh, homage to the 84 and 98 teams. So really, really good combination overall. So this was a shining example. Another really shining example is Bulgaria, but they also did in three stages. We start out with this absolutely horrific crest. In 98, they used the cold of arms VH, VH I like. They had them previously a similar crest, but with a triangle. But this does everything wrong. Circle, yes, the Bulgarian flag is the best thing about it, but what I really hate is the Telstar type ball because it cheapens the look considerably. And not only, only that, having a ball with the uh, five, with, with, with the Pentagon on the front, it looks so static. There is no movement, it's just boom, ball. There is no idea what, it just looks boring. Now, Bulgaria in 2016 switched over to Homa and Homa did something great. And again, I'm saying Homer did something great. Uh, it might be that they did this in conjunction. They maybe hired some external A, A agency, whatsoever. They went to the coat of arms and they went to the shield within the coat of arms. This looks awesome. Don't keep this one on there. What also looks awesome on this one is Bulgarian flag trim. Also on the sleeves. Makes it look great. We can discuss the striping here, the golden stripes. That may or may not. I think it works for, 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 for me. The only thing that does not work, and this is uh, one gripe, don't have two logos. I mean, they did it nicely. We'll see a little on a worse example. Here is the main logo, then here's the Federation logo, and then you have the manufacturer's logo. Uh, it, at least there is some balance to it. But on the other side, I have to say, um, will this look better? And then you have a number here. I think this would do much more the trick. But Bulgaria got it right. In 2018, they dropped the Federation logo. I mean, I have here the away jersey and now it looks proper. This is a proper shirt. There's still a little bit Bulgarian flag trim, although doubled, but there you have the flag in there as well. So for me, it's a really, really good. Uh, I love this jersey. It is simple as can be. I am absolutely in love with, love with this one. Another thing, and this now applies mostly to European teams uh, and to a large degree also South American teams. If you're a big team or if you're a well-established nation that had some success, keep it simple. You don't need any extras. I think this works really, really, really well. So one improvement. One last one uh, that has been a good improvement, shows all the right things, is uh, we're going now to South America to one of the most iconic designs. My first Peru jersey was this one. I was so happy I had, had had a Peru jersey, but you see already, kind of um, Valon, not a well-known um, uh, manufacturer, of course, is, is from Peru. Has a lot of template stuff going on with, yes, it has the sash, it looks beautiful, but do we need this? And do we need this here on the bottom and also those slivers? It's very 2000s. Also, uh, what I used to like you have all these Peruvian crests in there. Also the Peruvian crest, honestly, yeah, it is the flag, it is in a shield, it's FPF, it is all right. I think one could do a teeny bit better. And that's what they did just last year. I think a Peru jersey probably looks best if you just have the sash on a white jersey. However, uh, switching over to Marathon, they really did something absolutely gorgeous. I mean, the crest got updated. Um, I let you decide which one looks better. They're both not really great, to be honest. Uh, I may have even a slight uh, preference to the old one, because this one is almost too simplistic. However, it doesn't really matter. We have a white jersey with, with a sash, we have a little red outline that is okay, although probably all white would look better. But what really puts this jersey over, 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 over top is a nod to the Inca culture, we add a little bit of rainbow effect. So this is take a classic look, just a little splash of local identity and you get a, a, a really, really great jersey. On the back, even better. I even would say, I mean, cannot really do it, but using this as a national crest would probably even work better. So for me, this is one other really great example uh, of how you can do a rebrand and really have a great identity. All three of these should stay the way they are. All three of these, uh, Peru, even the logo, I'm fine with it. 
Maybe you can do something a little bit better, but don't mess with that look. Let's go to a bad example. My home country, Austria. And I on purpose took here the black one because here this is the um, base we build. It's, not, it's the national flag. It's a little bit the coat of arms. It's just the eagle. Uh, then they put it on the shield. This has been worn like this in, in, var in variation of the uh, forever. Usually, uh, typically on a white jersey, here I have, have, have it in black jersey. On the red jersey, I just want to say the proper thing would be to not have red, white, red, but just have the white shield with the eagle. Because the red with the red of the base uh, kind of uh, blends too much. I absolutely love it. I know that the problem is that this is not the property of the Austrian Football Federation. The Austri Austrian Football Federation had rather a uh, worrisome history of bad logos. However, they pull it over the top when they released just uh, recently this abomination of a commercial logo. The jersey does really good things. This is ties in with local culture. You have a little bit uh, Art Deco um, stuff of all of Vienna. It looks like a traditional vested uh, look and if you have black pants, even with ladles and you know, a vest, the white shirt under, even with the collar, I think that looks all great. This logo, not only, I think the best part of it is the, the writing on top. The eagle, just side by side, is a downgrade. However, there have been downgrades of the eagle, but making the head that small, the wings that big, I think that my seven-year-old can design a better eagle and to top it off, put this static ugly ball there. If you put a ball and we come to that, if you are a federation and say since 1904, use at least the balls that was used in the 30s and the 50s. Um, maybe let's go straight to that. I'll skip over Germany. <laughs> if we look, for instance, at Hungary, at the current Hungary jersey, this is the Federation logo. Looks very much like the national symbol called the call, called the call of arms of Hungary. Look at the ball that they're using. That's the ball. If Austria uses this ball, and also look at how non-standard the ball is lying. This is at least dynamic. This is like this is played. This is how it should, should, should be. If you have this friggin' Telstar even, move the pattern around to get a little bit dynamics in there. I know it's all about symmetry here, but this symmetry is boring. Twist it a little bit, turn it a little bit to make it really look like a ball. That's why I like this Hungarian logo, although I have my problems with it. But this Hungarian logo, this ball, looks really, really cool. Now, the problem is that this side and this side, they look friggin' similar. I think color this side and use this as a logo, although I would prefer to have the real color color of arms. But I understand commercial, uh, the commercialism would only allow this one. So, um... Decide on which one to use. Not Austria, uh, Austria was since 1904, Hungary 1901. Use this logo. I think this looks really, really good. Just put a little bit of color on it, uh, according to this code of arms uh, here, and you would have some, some, something good. But both a little bit too much. The other thing is, I mean, this is now again Adidas template. They tried to make a little bit out of it to say these are the waves of the Danube. Yeah, okay, maybe. Just try. Going to the neighbors, Slovakia. This actually looks okay. We have the two logos and the Adidas logo, although I still would say only use one. Slovakia does something similar, but goes the other di direction wrong. Again, national logo, great. Nike swoosh should be centered because this just looks off. I love this jersey. It has a nice pattern on there. Um, but yeah, if you want to go with this logo, look, look, look at this ball. It's not the Telstar ball, but it also doesn't look... Uh, quite right but at least it is a little bit twisted there is a little bit of dynamics in there although this logo or a variation of that would be way 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 better so yeah decide on which logo to choose uh, I understand commercial uh, if you want a, a brand you want to use something that you own so in that sense maybe you have to go with your um, logo but at least make it look as closely to the original as possible. If you must use both, use what Hungary does. Don't go like Slovakia. On the other side, I mean, Hungary also has the advantage here. We have a little bit of a flag, although the green could be a little bit thicker, but we have the Hungarian flag in there. 
Slovakia, what I really like here is that we have an interesting pattern, at least on sleeves. So you take a template, you make it at least a little bit more interesting. The other thing is, of course, you have the same logo as the crest on the back, which is always something nice. So yeah. Now, if you use your Federation logo only, do it the English way, maybe do it the German way. I don't like circular stuff, but Germany has had Sork Circle for a long time. Stay with the Sork Circle stuff. I think Germany uh, does it nice here. Also, keep it simple. Yes, you use kind of a template, but it's a very simple shirt. Simple is effective. We, we want to see that. I don't dislike this jersey. I think this should be a, a, actually look for Germany going forward, but it's a little bit overdone. It has a circle crest, but I think it's a little bit overdone uh, with, with the overlook. I still would go with this one a little, a, a little bit more, maybe just for Germany. I'm so used to the circle that we can leave the circle here, but you know, up and down. This is one of the best uh, recent Germany jerseys, I have to say. But if you use your Federation crest, at least try to stand out. At least try to stand out. Let me show you why. And we can add, of course, um, we can we, we can add, of course, um, the uh, Israel jersey, Ireland, and North Macedonia. Those crests are very very similar. And again, not only are they very similar, what I really don't like is for Ireland if they will just use the clover and a circle around it like they did. That's a great logo. What is this? It's a clover ball. Should be in, in, in a way with a uh, super Gaelic uh, writing up there. Actually, the best thing about this one are the colors. Similar for North Macedonia. Again, we have a kind of a dynamic ball, a modern ball, which for Macedonia is actually fine because it's a very uh, recent confederation. Uh, it's a clear copy, same designer as this one, and Israel does the same thing. Uh, they just use instead of the clover the David star. Um, and here we have the fireball. Kind of positive though, and it looks much better on the home churches than this one. The radiating out is of course a reference to the flag. And if you need to put a flag, put it on the back. That makes sense. Put it on the back. Don't use the flag here. Here, a square thingy doesn't look right. Look at the Switzerland jersey here. It looks static. It looks boring. If you need to use a flag, do it in a circle, like Turkey did here. Plus here also, classic look, I know this was an away jersey, this is the classic Turkish look, white with a red chest band, and using a traditional pattern just to add a little bit extra when you look up close. It's a beautiful jersey, and the flag is within a circle. It looks a whole lot better. You can also go, ah, we have another one in a circle. Norway, not the perfect, I think this would be just fine, but if you need to add uh, the flag, maybe put it in a circle. It looks better, although I would prefer if it would be a little bit out and everything is in, the, in, in, a, in a circle. Or if, like Switzerland, you could also put it in a circle because you've been, been doing this for a whole lot of time. However, you can also put it just as part of the overall pattern. You have the Swiss flag in there, but it's part of the pattern. Um, they also have been using, before they had only, for, for the Knights, they only had this part of the logo without the soccer player. And they made these letters red and then suddenly you see here the white Swiss cross coming out. That actually didn't look that bad. You had kind of the Swiss flag in there and you had the red. Uh, not perfect, but also not bad looking. Um, so yeah, I do not like it done this way. The Swiss flag should be in a circle because the Swiss have been doing this all along. Now, the next one, <laughs> and now we come to a big one. If you have a logo, stick with it. Don't mess around, stay consistent. We go through some of my most favorite shirts now, uh, and this will, will be a long one. And I don't even have all the examples. Italy. The first Italy jersey that I ever saw used this circle logo. Actually, I don't, this still doesn't look old to me. This still looks all right. However, I do prefer the shield that they had before and then they got around 2000. This is the classic Italy look. I think Italy looks best with that and a little bit Italia on top of that. In between, they had a very weird logo with a circle that was just blue and then uh, something below. That was almost, almost the worst. 
it was not the worst, but almost the worst. But you see already, in the 90s, we, uh, from the 80s, where we had this logo, um, we went to the 90s with the weird logo that was used from 94 uh, to, nine, to 98. Then Kappa took over in 98. We had the shield again. It looked glorious. The color was a little bit off. And then we decided, okay, we need a completely new logo because, again, marketing. We come up with this abomination and the worst thing ever happens, you win the World Cup, so this is gonna stay. I cannot tell you how much I hate this one. First of all, um, while I do like maybe slightly the idea that the stars are within the crest, I think it looks better on top of it. Second of all, uh, why the down errors? Why is everything pointing down? I'm okay with this FGG logo almost, but then also why is the white so much thicker than the green? And why then? You clearly were not thinking that you were winning a World Cup because this one at least looks somewhat is okay. Now you had the four stars. Same logo, you make this a whole lot, lot bigger. It just looks clunky. This never looked nice and I was always so annoyed I still am that I think my, most of the Italy jerseys that I have feature this logo. The jersey here, this one. This one, I'm, I know it's classic, I don't like as much. However, uh, this 2014 is actually a very nice Italy jersey. It has a little bit of lectrum, which I really not, like. Not as much as the 1991, but at least there is something there. It has a very classy look. We can get rid of those modernist straps, but other than that, I really, really like this one. However, Italy came good. Uh, it should have already been for the 2018 World Cup, but World Cups and Italy is, is another story. They at least got it right with the previous installment. This ticks almost, almost all, all the boxes. I have arguments with Idris. I don't necessarily like the navy. I would have liked this with the same blue and then have an Italian flag trim and have this here too. But that's my only complaint. The new crest, a vast improvement. It clearly, clearly is a reference back to the traditional one. However, it adds a little bit more overhead here, but I think I'm fine with that. The Fiji G logo, okay, we can take it. I think this looks like a crest. I just would wish that this was a little, little bit, teeny bit tinier. But having the four stars here, and now it looks proper. And on top of that, of course, you have a cultural pattern in there, which makes the whole jersey stand out. Now, uh, as I said, we can talk about the color and inclusion of navy. I think, unfortunately, Navy is here to stay for Italy, although I very much prefer my Italy jerseys just with um, blue and white, a little bit Italian flag. We come to another one um, where if you have a modernist logo, maybe look to the past and try to improve on it. Uh, we had already France, I'll go to auto and I'll show you now away jerseys. For away jerseys, also don't go crazy with the colors, go with colors that complement your look very well. I think um, the Netherlands have been doing very well with black. And then they had this lion crest, which I never really disliked to be honest. However, when they came out with this one, there is no denying that this is better. I mean, again, like the French, look at the detailing on this shirt. Look, just look at the detailing of this lion. Also, orange and blue complement each other very well. Not as good as orange. Uh, um, orange and black is not as great, although the, it does look good as well. But orange and blue is a wonderful combination. Um, but I understand, I think orange and white or so. But you know, those are the three colors for the Netherlands. And this is enough. I mean, just switch around between those two. Then have a little bit of reference to, uh, you know, this is clearly a little bit of callback to the uh, 88 pattern. So all really, really nice. Another one uh, where we got a Federation logo and we have now a change to is Spain. Putting a coat coal of arms is a great thing. However, then they made the Federation logo just, this is 2006, 2008. You use the same coat of arms for Spain. You put a shield around it. and I know initially I was not on board with it, but the more I thought about it, the better it was. And Spain is an old federation. We put a ball, but it's an old ball. It doesn't bother me at all. It doesn't bother me. It just says, this screams historic. 1913, this screams historic. 
if your federation was founded in the 60s or uh, 70s or thereafter, then you can use modern balls. If you have not been uh, making an impact on the stage uh, after World War, uh, before, if you haven't been doing it before World War II, uh, then okay, then it's okay to use the Telstar ball. If you're an old federation like Spain, make it look classic. Now the new uh, crest is simplified. Um, it is monochrome. Actually, I understand why they do it monochrome, but this is this because there's too much detail. Um, but I think it still looks Spain. However, funny note, as long as Spain was wearing the full colored crest, they were winning things. For World Cup 2014, they discolored it. And since then, Spain has, has not won a thing any, any, any anymore. So this is kind of the classic European South American team section. Keep it simple, make it look old. Um, if you are a small nation like Liechtenstein or Andorra or, or whatever, there you need to make a splash. Because here you need to add a little bit to stand out. But the classic looks, don't mess with it. Now, let's go to the soccer balls, another uh, one. The US are actually an old federation, as old as Spain, believe it or not. The US also had one of the worst federation crests of all time. This is straight out of the 90s. The only thing I give it to, this is a Telstar ball, but at least it's dynamic. It is a little bit turned. That's the best thing about this logo. Stars and stripes inverted. The US have red and white stripes and the stars should be uh, on, on the blue background. Why are there only three stars? What did they win or whatever? Is this for gold cups? It's not really clear. Awful crest. Although the design of this shirt is not so bad because the sash goes back to the 1950s, I still think make a red sash and then you have it. However, they came good just a couple of years later with the centenary logo. I know they have released now a new one that is similar to, to, to this one. This is a United States logo. They should use this one all through. And there are the 13 stars for the, uh, for the um, initial 13 colonies, which is a symbol. You have the stars and stripes. This is glorious. This is absolutely 100% glorious. And keep it simple. Now, we're going now away from uh, the Americas. We go now to Asia and Africa. Here, you can go crazy. Look at Korea. You take the white jersey, put tiger stripes. You have a tiger here, make use of that. Looks awesome. Uh, the jersey is still simple, but it's, under, it's, it, it's a little bit understated. However, Korea uh, recently had a redesign and yeah, it's so-and-so. I have to say, up close, this tiger looks really, really good. But I cannot... Two stereotypical Asian eyes here. That's, and, and even the smile, it looks almost bad. However, then you have this spectacular jersey, uh, also with tight, tight, tight stripes, and I absolutely love it. I would not love this if any European team would come up with something like that, honestly. Now let's go back to the soccer ball and let's go to Africa. Uh, by, by the way, you have here a soccer ball kind of hidden away. Just okay, but you know the tiger is playing with it. You don't need it. This crest uh, proves that. Now let's go africa and with africa you can go wild however african crests are very much hit and miss and we're gonna go now from the good to the bad <sighs> love this jersey african design you have the lion you can go a little a little a little bit crazy even the new crest is really cool did you know that there's a soccer ball in there look closer there is one in there but you barely see it a little bit the patterning is in there that's pretty good we can discuss about the duplicity of the lion and the punky lion. Okay, but other than that, wonderful. Another one that is good. We have the Telstar ball uh, on this one, but again, note it is rotated. We have the national symbol with the eagle. I love it. I heard others that don't love it. I absolutely love it because Africa, you need to do, do a little, little bit more. And you have the eagle in here too. You have the country outline. Unfortunately, Mali is at the moment in a load of trouble. And the golden color. Mali was the country of gold in many ways. Makes total, total sense. Here the Telstar ball, I don't mind it at all. Especially since it's pointed and so on, and it's very tiny. Really good look, honestly. 
Now we're going a little bit in the next territory. Uh, Cameroon, we have two. The lion is the logo. Yes, we need a Cameroonian flag. Do we really need the ball and so uh, static? It is just about okay. It is just about okay, but i rather have here. And you know, we have another lion here too, of course. Just about okay. I will remove this one and have the Cameroon shield here and we're talking. Doesn't need to be, although for Cameroon, again, kind of a little bit younger, uh, post-World War II, looks all right. Stick with the lion. Isn't that sufficient? Use a little bit of flag trim. Now, absolutely spectacular, although not classic, is of course the Nigeria jersey. Uh, again, enough retro vibes, enough uh, different looking. Again, the eagle sits on a ball, the ball is too static. Other than that, circular crest is kind of all right. I never was bothered by this crest and you have great design. Now we get a little bit in the questionable. Uh, this Ghana jersey, I love this Puma range with all the traditional African patterns. I even don't mind the Ghana logos that much because you know you have a little bit dynamics in it, but the dynamics are not coming from the ball. Absolutely horrible, this ball in here. I think if you make the ball a lot smaller and have the Ghanaian flag wrap around it, do something. Also, you're the black stars. Why not just use here a big black star instead of the ball and have your flag wrap around it? That would look much better. And lastly, an awesome jersey with one of the worst possible crests. Egypt. What is this? Egypt is missing the mark so much with, with the logos. You have the pharaohs, you have the pyramids, and you come up with this. Huh? What should this be? Uh, the ball is not static, at least something horrible. Definitely need for a redesign. So these are my do's and don'ts in a way. You see kind of, it's not, there's not a one size fits all uh, approach to it. Um, just for the all-star ball, the Croatia jersey back there, look at the Croatian. On the bottom, there's an all-star ball. That actually looks pretty cool, I have to say. Uh, it doesn't bother me. However, uh, these types of balls, well, for African teams, it is okay. The Egyptian FA is a little bit older and this well, doesn't go there. But it's not only the ball. You can do so many things. You can put some traditional pattern on there. For European teams, use it sparingly. For African teams, go all out. Like your, look at your traditional clothing. This is usually good. Look at your uh, national colors. That is always a good starting point. And of course, look at tradition. Uh, why so many people hate this Germany jersey is because um, it breaks tra tradition for an all-white look. However, I thought that this Germany team needed a rebrand like the France team did. And maybe uh, more modern Germany, uh, given the not so glorious past, uh, at least since they were the DFB was a soccer federation, maybe, yeah, would, would, would it make sense to completely modernize it. Uh, so I can understand that. Oh, in many ways, don't mess around. Uh, one last one I want to say, this 2014 Ar Ar Argentina jersey. Why did you need to put the logo in this weird shield? Just stick with what you know is best and put the stars on top. Uh, and one last one for South America. One very la last one, the Uruguay logo, I think is a really, really good one. It just has a ball in there. That should not be there. Okay. What do you think? Do you agree with me? Uh, do you have other opinions? Uh, again, it was a long video, but I think uh, it, I just want to get uh, something off my chest. I could have maybe done it a little bit more um, structure, but I thought it's best to show you cases where it works, where it doesn't work. In any case, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more uh, Jersey related videos or other videos from me too. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay up to with everything that happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.